I went from old school Chevys to drop top horses. You couldn't walk a mile off in my air forces. Hey. <laughs> Man, you already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life and we're back. It is Tuesday. Mm, what happened special on Tuesday? Not a whole lot except you're almost halfway through the week. Did a video yesterday, but decided not to drop it, man. I was just not happy with how it turned out. Really busy day yesterday. I was rushed. The video felt rushed. So I was like, man, I'm not putting this out. So I didn't drop it. But then today, here we are. Prison and jail are filled with tough guys. Guys that have good mouthpieces. Really good at talking crap. That's about all they're good at. They're no good underneath pressure. Seen a lot of that. Seen a lot of guys that, based off of their mouths and what they had to say, oh, you just knew that dude was a force to be reckoned with. His threat game, his wordplay, the things that came out of his mouth, will have you thinking that that's the last guy in the world you want any type of beef with. The world is full of those. You know, the guys that they try to win the battle with their mouths, They the, before the fight even starts, they start running their mouth, they try to kind of psych you out with wordplay. And then you watch somebody grab a hold of one of them and it's, ah, 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 and scream while they're getting beat up. That's prison. I've seen a lot of guys talk their talk, and when it come down to it, not be able to walk that walk. I've seen guys that I just knew were going to come out on top. And you see him get to fight, and you're like, is this his first fight? Has this dude ever had any type of conflict before? Like, it's legitimately, when he gets into it with somebody, it's like watching a, a grown man beat up on a child. That's what we're getting into today. Some of these fake tough guys. These all mouth, no action guys. Pay attention, tough guys. All bark, no bite. You know how to see it. You know how to live it. So let's relive it. So quick updates real quick for the people that watch. Saturday, I want to thank everybody that came out to Armstrong High School. Had some viewers show up for the back to school event. Giving back to the kids. Making sure all the children have the supplies and things they need to get school started. Big salute to all y'all. Thank y'all for coming out. Sunday, went to church with my wife. I do have my faith. I don't get on here. I don't really get into race, religion, or politics because everybody's got an opinion. So I don't push my agenda. I don't push, um, you know, religion down nobody's throat. I believe in God. That's my belief. That's just where I stand. Been to church twice since I, I've gotten out. And um, wife said, hey, let's go to church. Slept in Sunday morning. We actually overslept. And once we realized we were running late, we said, well, we'll just sleep in. And I ended up going to church later on that evening with my wife. Did some pictures real quick. I love getting dressed up. Man. I love anything that gives me an excuse to put a suit on. As you can see, the little man, he got done up too. So we did that. And uh, aside from that, it has just been work. The little girl that we currently have, little Miss Bella, her sister is also, her sister is being raised by her dad by the sister's dad and he has reached out he has gotten his life together he's a good guy shout out to john and um him and his wife are were looking to adopt a child what better than to get their daughter's half sibling her little sister it was never for us to have bella long term it was for us to have her as long as need be for the family for the dad and the mom to get their life together but that's not looking real promising. And they have reached out and said, look, we would love to adopt her. We want her to be with somebody that's close to her, her sister being her sibling. So we're gonna go through the process. They're gonna go through the adoption process. She can stay with me till she's 18. We love the little girl. We're very attached to her, but we're not just gonna let her go anywhere. We're gonna make sure where she goes is safe, that she's taken care of and that she's loved and treated like every child should be treated. And that's what she's gonna receive with John and her. So CPS is going to go out, check their house out, their living conditions, their backgrounds, yada, yada, yada. Make sure everything was good with them. And if all goes as planned, Bella will end up not in the best situation. The best situation would be with her birth parents. But people don't always get their act together. So she will be with her sister's dad and his wife. And she'll get to grow up around her sister. That's all I've really got. Crazy busy work week ahead of me. Crazy busy work week behind me. This Friday marks my vacation time. Thank you, God. We are off all the next week, and I'm going to be off into the next week on vacay. All my guys are off, so this 
Friday, they will get their check for the week, for you know, the hours they work this week. And then they will get a 40 hour bonus check on top of that. Thank you to all my guys. That's all I got. Let's get into these all bark, no bite. Let's get into today's video. <laughs> so I'm talking to Philly on the phone the other day, right? He's gotten shipped. He's now less than two years, so he's got to go through. In Virginia, you have reentry. Reentry is when you're less than two years, they send you to certain prisons that part of that prison is designated for reentry to get you ready to go back into society so you don't just come out with a prison mentality all messed up in the head. That is one of the things Virginia offers. Philly just got shipped to Indian Creek. Therapeutic community. Change the way you think. It's all bad. Super bad. Me and him got to talking, and I know from doing time a lot of the same guys that he knows. It's crazy when you're you and somebody are alike and y'all both done time. Even though me and him hadn't done time in prison together here in Virginia, we've done time in jail together. But even we split off in our paths and he's back in prison. He has done bids with a lot of guys that at some point or another I used to walk the yard with. Guys I used to bid with. So I've been talking to him the other day. We just like, we tell stories and laugh and joke on the phone. I try to take his mind off of prison. And, you know, we just kick it and bull crap and whatnot. We got to talk about this dude I know named Red. I met Red when I went through the receiving process, right? While in receiving, Red's this white dude now, right? He's like from Fredericksburg area that just loves to talk tough. He's got a little size on him. I could see right through Red from the gate. I knew a lot of what he was doing was bluff game. It was his way of not fighting. That is a, a scare tactic guys use. To keep from fighting, they convince you that they want to fight. They make all this noise and apply all this pressure. When in reality, they're trying to win the fight without ever having to fight. Red always struck me as one of those guys. Soon as we got to receiving, Red gets into it with somebody in the bathroom. And I heard all these different stories because it wasn't, you had A unit and B unit. He was in B, I was in A. I heard all these different scenarios of how Red got whooped, Red whooped dude, Red was acting like he wanted to fight, but he didn't want to fight, and then Red did want to fight. It was just a whole bunch of different stories I heard. And then we were out back, Red told his version of the story, and his version was that dude didn't want to fight. Straight up, he's like, dude was scared, we went in the bathroom. Why would you be trying to fight somebody that's scared of you? Why would you try to be a bully? Said they go in the bathroom and that, that Dude is more or less trying to talk his way out to fight, and Red's like, nah, we already in here. Boom! Takes flight on dude. Gets to whooping up on dude. Guards come in, they play it off like they were just horse playing. Hey, yo, horse play again, you can get ridden up. You can't horse play. It's a charge in prison. I get shipped off to Greensville. He gets shipped off to Lunenburg. Years go by now, mind you. Years go by now. I'm not thought about this dude. I'm not thinking about dudes I was in receiving with. I've met at this point hundreds, maybe thousands of guys I've come across because Greensville holds almost 3,700 inmates. One of the large, it is the largest prison in Virginia. And doing time there, I come across so many different guys that I start to forget guys. So I've forgotten all about Red, a lot of the guys from receiving. I'm not thinking about them no more. Walk in the yard one day and you start to, you notice a new face when you see it. You walk that yard so much that you know who's new there. You see this guy every single day. You've seen him summer after summer. You know in the summertime he plays softball. That guy over there, you know he plays basketball. That guy works out. That guy runs all day. This guy's a gang member. You get to, even if you don't know them, you start to become familiar with faces. I see some white dudes walking and I see a new face in the crowd. And as I'm looking, as we walk past each other, he looks and nods at me. and. I look at him and I nod and I'm walking with, you know, my homeboys and them. And we're still talking, but as we're talking, my brain is trying to process, where do I know this dude from? I know him. Is it from the streets? Is it from jail? Is it from one of God knows how many different bids I've done? Boom, it dawns on me. That's Red from receiving. Got the fight in the bathroom. Everybody said this and he said this. And there was so many different scenarios of what happened. That's that guy. I process all that maybe 30, 45 seconds after walking past it. We're heading in different directions around the track. We go to cross again. He's like, you was at receiver. You was at such such place and uh, such such. I said, yeah. He's like, your, your name's Jay. I was like, yeah, you're red, right? He's like, yeah, what's up? So he tells his homeboys and them. He knows some of these guys. Hey, I'm going to spin the track with him and walk real quick. So I tell my homeboys, hey, I'll catch up with you. Y'all just you know, keep it moving. 
they start walking and we walk together. It's crazy how in just doing time with somebody for a short period somewhere else and they show up to a place they don't know a lot of people, they know a few, that now that they know you from another camp, it kind of makes y'all friends. Like y'all have some type of rapport and we were never really friends. We lived in two different sections of the building. But we get to walking, talking, and he's telling me he was at the last camp and he was putting in work and he had put hands on so many people and man, you've been fighting during your bid. I'm like, I done had some squabbles, but I try not to do all that. Man, my, I've been wrecking my whole bid. Man, my name was known at the last place I was at. Yeah, they put me on investigation, got me up over there, so I'm here now. All right, that's what it is. That night we go in the cell and we lock down. At the time, my cellmate's 80 and Barth. I did a story on 80 and he was the guy with the cartel plug, yada, yada, yada. Me and him got caught in a visitation room with the whole drug ordeal and now he's back in prison 20 plus years because he got popped here recently with a bunch of work. My cellie was out on the yard that day walking with his blood homeboys, Brim Gang is what he was. See me walking with the dude Red and when we locked down at night, he says, uh, Dude, you was walking with the day. What about him? What's his name? I don't know his name. What do they call him? He asked me what his name is. I'm thinking he's asking, like, what's his government name? I don't know his name. They call him Red. Why, what's up? The homies wanted me to holler at you because you was walking with him and find out at what camp he was at last. I know if I'm being questioned about this dude that there's something bad. There's something coming. He's done did something. I have an active blood as a cellmate at the time that is asking me about a neutron, a guy that's not gang affiliated, that just got here from another prison. Something's up. I said, why, what's up with him? He said one of the homies seen him and claims that he was at the last camp with him and that they both got transferred here to Greensville. All right, where you going with this, man? Homie said dude's foul, man. He said he owes some money up there and that he bucked on the money and got shipped and probably gonna need to collect that up off of him the way penitentiary rules go is once you get shipped that is dead if you owe money for some commissary or something stupid when you get shipped that's dead now if you and that person run into each other in the future and he wants to apply pressure and be petty about some stuff you owed him from back in the day then you might have an issue or you might be expected to pay it but you're not just going to get shipped to another prison and have some dudes that you had no dealings with press up on you and tell you you owe them some money because you owed one of their homeboys some money. It's not how it works. But with the gangs, that's how they expect it to work because they have the numbers. And even though they weren't at that last spot with you because they're affiliated with that dude that was at the last spot and you left owing him some money, that's organization money. They look at it like he's blood, so you owe the bloods. So we're coming to collect that. I said, well look, man, let me holler that dude, man, and find out What's going on? He's like, yeah, I just, I need to make sure that's him, but I'm pretty sure that's him. My homeboy said that, you know, he transferred here. The dude that told him out that said he was there was actually in the hole, yelling out of 10 building. Our building, our rec yard was seven building rec yard. You could yell out the hole to the guys walking around. He's not even in population, but you got these gang members go to the fence and stand there and talk to dudes in the hole. And he's telling dudes from the hole, pretty much, see the two dudes right there? Yeah, the, the taller one. Yeah, that's, I think that dude's name's Red. Yeah, he shipped here with me, and, yo, he owes, you know, the homies at the other camp some money. He can't say a whole lot of why he owes money because he's in the hole. There's other people listening. He's yelling out a window. There are ears everywhere, so you can't be like, hey, he owes money for it, and it'd be something illegal because he can get jammed up. He said, yeah, well, I'm going to wait for the homie to come out the hole and find out what's really good and what's going on and uh, make sure 100% that's him, but I'm almost positive it's your homeboy. All right, he's not my homeboy. I just walked with him during this lap, like this part of the wreck period. I don't know that dude like that. For them to be pushing up on me about what he's done did somewhere else, no, 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 no. The next day we go out and I, I see Red again. Red is living upstairs. He's in 300 pot. I'm in 100. His pot is directly above mine on the third and fourth floor. I see him outside the next day and he's walking with the two dudes that are in his pod. And I call him, I say, hey, come here which I really should have stayed out of it. But to try to keep stuff from escalating, keep things from turning to something they shouldn't be, somebody getting hurt and us going on lockdown and shakedown, I decided to call him over and talk to him about what my cellie had told me. 
So that's when I find out exactly where he came from. I said, hey, uh, so what was the last camp you was at? Or was that Lunenburg? Look, somebody came to me yesterday about you, man. They're not sure if it's you, but I'm pretty sure it's you, just on the way that he was talking about you. Why, well, what they said? Did you leave from up there owing some people some money? Because it's a blood dude that's questioned about you, and he's got a whole lot of other homies, and they're going to uh, eventually come at you about this money. So I told him I'd check you out, see what's up with you, find out if you was at Lunenburg. If you was at Lunenburg, then you're the guy that's talking about it. Yeah, I was at Lunenburg. All right. To the second part of it. There's a dude in the hole. It was down nine building. Got into it with somebody in nine building. Is now back in the hole. He's yelling out from the hole, telling his homeboys and them that you did something foul of Lunenburg, but won't say what it is. Oh, that's crazy. He trying to start stuff. It ain't even nothing like that. All right, well, I'm asking you, like, you're not, this dude ain't my homeboy, but I need to know because I'm in the cell with a blood that wants to know about this dude. I said, all right, what happened? He was like, it ain't nothing, man. I... What'd he say? I said, he said you left, dude, you owed some money. You did something foul. He's like, nah, that's crazy. He's like, I ran a little store box, you know what I mean? And I did parlay tickets, so I had some parlay money on me. Parlay ticket is a little piece of paper. You draw it out. You get somebody to make copies of it with the copy machines. You pass these little slips out. You can bet a dollar. A dollar wins you $10. You can bet $10, and this is all on sports. $10 brings you $100. You pick a certain amount of numbers, over, unders, Vegas odds, things like that. It's a big, big thing in prison is parlay. He's like, nah, he's talking about the parlay tickets. And uh, he had all these different stories, man. He said, I had some parlay money dudes that gave me, but my property got packed up and I got shipped. That's dead. He said, I did owe for a little bit of weed, but you're talking like 20 bucks, 25 bucks. Man, I know they ain't pressed over no little 20, 25 bucks. But for real, Jay, it's whatever. You tell me who's asking questions about me, and I'll go straight at him and tighten them up. Red, red, red. You can't do that here. Whatever you was doing over there with them dudes, you could do over there. You can't do that here. These dudes got numbers. These dudes push blades. They sling iron up here. They will put more holes in you than a cheese grater. This ain't what you want, Red. Well, I'm just telling you, dudes know my name. They know how I get down. He starts with that, that getting loud stuff, that loudest in the room stuff. They know how I get down. I rock out behind mine. Ain't nobody about to press red about nothing. Matter of fact, who your cellmate is? Tell me who your cellmate is. I'm not even about to do that. My cellmate would have dug up in his mouth. And when the blood see him move, they all go move. Been a bad day for red. I said, look, man, you taking it somewhere. It ain't even got to be yet. You getting all hype. If these dudes even hear you over here getting hype, they can come over here and do something bad to you. I'm not trying to get mixed up on what this idiot has going on. I wasn't at Lunenburg with him. And as of right now, I don't know what's real and what's fake. So I go back and my somebody asked, if you talk to him? I said, yeah, he said he was at Lunenburg, but you know what I mean? He, he had a parlay and he owed some little money for like this. And he had a store box talking about something. He don't know what y'all talking about. He don't owe no bloods, no money, no nothing like that, right? He said, well, look, I still ain't holler at my homeboy like talking about in the hole. He's supposed to be shooting a kite out to us. A kite is... When you write something on a piece of paper and get it from one man to the next, you can't communicate through talking, so you send a kite. He said, we're waiting on a kite to come out the hole, and then we'll know what homie's talking about. Red goes on back about his business. I'm not really rocking with the dude. I continue to walk with my homeboy, BK, and my other homeboys and them, and continue to do my thing. Me and my cellie get along great. We're cool to this day. Me and my cellie get to talking one day, and they come around, and the dude's sweeping, pushing the broom down the chair, sweeping. He stops by the door, and he's like, yo. Sally so hops off the bunk, goes to the door, and he hands him a little piece of paper. He takes it, sits down. It's a whole entire front and back letter. And he gets to reading it and reading and reading. And he's like, man, this is crazy. I said, what is it? Now, this is gang stuff, so he's not supposed to let me read anything. He's not supposed to give me anything gang-related. But he wants me to relate a message, so he gives me the rundown. He said, your homeboy does owe money, man. I said, well, what's up with him? He said... He got a bunch of dope at the last place. He was getting high at the last place, doing dope, heroin at the last place. Got a whole bunch of stuff right after he packed his stuff up and just bounced. I said, what? That don't even make sense. Why would somebody give somebody something and they know they're transferring? He said, no. They told him he was transferring in the morning. The way transfer works is the day prior to you getting shipped to another prison, you pack all your belongings up, you take it over to property, property officer logs everything in anything you're trying to ship with that's not on the items of the list of things you bought they're going to confiscate from you right there and they ship your property 
ahead of you. They get the box ready, and the next day when you go, boom, the box goes on the bus, and y'all leave. He said, nah, dude said your homeboy packed his property up, went out on the yard that evening, went to some of the blood dudes in another building that didn't know he had packed his stuff up, got a whole bunch of dope fronted to him, and shipped the following day. Left them dudes thinking that he was going to be there for the long haul, that they were going to get their money. So what he did was he pulled some grimy stuff. He got high, told them he was going to pay for it, had done it before, I guess. But this time he got it the day before he shipped. The following day, he gets shipped and thinks that's the end of it. No, no, no. I said, nah, man, this might be the wrong red. I said, dude, don't. From what I know, dude, don't get high. I was at another camp with him. He was at another camp with him. You ain't tell me that. I said, that's how I know the dude. I went through receiving with him, but he wasn't getting high up there. You know what I mean? Like, everybody smokes a little weed. Might do do a pill or something when it comes around. But I don't remember that dude. There's no get high dude. It has been a few years. He could be. I ain't been around him in forever. I don't know what he's got going on. We go back out to the yard and I holler at Red. I say, yo, it looks bad, man. Like, if you're the dude they're talking about, you're probably gonna have problems up here. Why, what they saying? Back to this getting hype stuff. Everything I just told y'all, I run down to him. No, that's a lie. They got me twisted with somebody else. I don't get how I don't do that. That's not me, and I ain't about to pay nothing that don't belong to me. I'll fight behind mine. He keeps saying this, I'll fight behind mine. I'll fight behind mine with you. If you're gonna do it, do it. Don't just stand there and keep talking about it, right? I said, well, here's what's gonna happen, man. I'm not getting in the middle of this, like, I don't even know you like that. I know you from another camp. It's cool and all. I just spent a couple times of talking to you. It's a whole bunch going on. And you just got here. So now it lets me know that he was on some sneaky shit at the last camp. I said, my cellmate wants to holler at you, so I'm going to link y'all two up, and y'all can talk about it and leave me all the way out the picture, right? All right, that's what's up. That's what's up. We have night wreck at this point. That's when you come out after 630. That evening, I go in. My cellie's in there doing something. He didn't go to wreck. I said, hey. Come out tonight and holler at the dude, man. But understand this. I don't know that dude like that. So I don't want to be in the middle of it. So on the strength of I don't want to be in the middle of it, you and him can talk. Y'all can figure all that out. And I'll be on my way, right? He comes out that night and Ray comes walking up to me. And my celly's over there with a whole bunch of the blood dudes. And I tell my celly, hey, come here. So he tells them, hold off. One of his homeboys walks with him. Walks over where Red's at. His homeboy falls back. Stands back about five, six feet. He's a... Don't stand by, make sure his homeboy's okay. It's how blood activity goes, right? It's how gang activity goes. If he moves, they move. But instead of all them moving and making a scene, he just took one of his main dudes with him. Him and Red standing there talking, and Red's like, nah, you got me messed up, man. That ain't me. I wasn't up there. Dude's telling him it was you. So they send the dude over to the fence that yells at the hole, hey yo, and they holler for the homeboys in the hole, and he comes to the to the window, what's up? Dude saying that ain't him. Bring him to the fence. I'm standing and watch all this unfold in front of my eyes. Bring him over to the fence. He goes over to the fence. Hey, what's up? Hey, you got me mixed up with somebody else. That wasn't me. Hey, you was in such and such building? Yeah, I was in such and such building. You used to be with the dude such and such? Yeah, that was my homeboy them. It is you. You got the stuff from such and such and... The day before we left, man, you got it and packed up. And I got shipped like four days after you. It was you. I was on the yard after you shipped and everybody was looking for you. Pissed off because you shipped. And hey, you got to shoot that bread, bro. You know what you did was foul. The homies need that money. There's all these blood dudes out there. I'm thinking, all right, he was barking earlier. He's not about to get loud with all these dudes. Hey, bro, I don't know what you're talking about. You got me messed up. I ain't getting nothing from nobody. So dude comes back out the window. Oh, so you calling me a liar, huh? So I just lie to everybody about what you got going on. I know your name, but I don't know you. I'm just making stuff up. I don't know what you got going on, bro. That wasn't me. I ain't getting no la la la. They're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth in the hole. Now all these other bloods that had fallen back or walked over there. I'm standing back. I'm not going over, stand over there. That ain't my homeboy. I don't get high. I ain't ripped nobody off. Whatever you got going on, homeboy, you better take care of it. So he's going back and forth with this dude in the hole, and he got all these blood dudes standing around him, Red's telling them, man, look, I don't even look. It is what it is, man. Ain't nobody about to make me pay no money. I don't owe talking about I did something at the last camp. I ain't done nothing at the last camp. Straight like that. You got an officer that walks in between the two fences where the hole, it's actually three fences. You got the hole, then you got a fence, and another fence, and then this building, that's the hole. It's the officer that walks in between those fences. Officer sees all the gang members on the fence, dude at the window, tells the dude in the hole, hey, Get away from the window. Hey, y'all, get up off the fence and keep it moving. All oh, y'all, keep it moving. 
we all disperse. Bloods go that direction, red goes that direction, walking off that, I go that direction with my homeboys. We locked down that night. My cellmate tells me, dude's gonna dig up in red's mouth, man. I said, well, it is what it is. Red got problems, red got problems. I keep telling y'all, that's not my homeboy, man. Y'all keep coming to me like, but that's the thing, you're guilty by association in prison. Somebody sees you, that's why I tell you, you are who you hang out with. Somebody sees you talking to the boy, they assume you're a boy. They see you hanging out with gang members, they assume you, you're a gang member. So I said, yeah, he's like, yeah. We'll holler at the big homie, and the big dude that actually runs all this is in Four Hunt Pod upstairs, next door to the pod that Red lives in. He said, we're gonna holler at the big homie and, and see what's up, man, and uh, if dude don't shoot that bread, man, it's, it's bad. That big homie, which is the dude over top of all of them, comes out the next day and hollers at Red and says, look, here's what's gonna happen, man. Half of what this dude says, you're gonna, uh, you, you bucked on, you're gonna have your people go meet my dude's people, and pay that, and if not, it is what it is. Dudes are gonna go on you. The story I'm being told, once I hear about all this, is that Red didn't get all hype with him like he did these dudes out on the yard. There wasn't no officer around, so if things popped off, somebody could intervene in between it. When him and this dude spoke, he more or less somewhat fessed up to, yeah, that was him, it wasn't no misunderstanding. He just felt like dudes was trying to jump him, so he got aggressive. But he agreed to have whatever the half was. I think it was like 200 some dollars he owed these dudes. So that would be, say, $100. Red's going to have his girl on the streets. Go meet up with one of these blood dudes' girl on the streets. Give her the money. It's a done deal. Following day, I haven't talked to Red now in a couple of days. I didn't distance myself from him. Dude's clearly trouble. I don't want no parts of none of this. A couple of days goes by and he walks up on me. What's up with you, Jay? You don't mess with the kid or something? You be seeing me around here. You don't rock with me like that? I said, nah, bro, I just be doing me, man. You got yourself caught up in some drama. I ain't with all that drama, man. I ain't trying to be jammed up, sitting back there in the whole lot summertime. What's up with you, though? He's like, ain't nothing. The whole situation dead, it, man. He's like, I got with my girl, and my girl went and met dudes' people and gave her the money. I said, so it was you. He's like, it ain't what you thinking, though. They tried to make it seem like I intentionally did it or I was a, a junkie or something or I was out to get people. No, I wasn't even like that. But I did owe the dudes some money, so... They told me, give him half. My girl gave the dude's girl the money and she gonna send it in. Why is it every time this dude tells me one thing, I get told something completely different? Once again, I'm talking to my son, mate. He's like, yeah, that's it, man. They gonna smash dude. I said, why, what? What now? He's like, he's claiming that his girl paid the people on the streets when I met one of my homie's girls and gave her the money. And the homie's saying, no girl ain't never come through. Red's people ain't never contacted nobody. Nobody got no money. Oh, man, this is all bad. This dude is just lied, 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 lied. Word gets back to Red. I tell, he said, yo, you need to tell your homeboy we're going to give it a couple more days. I said, well, he said he sent the money and the dude's people got the money. He's like, he's wailing. They don't want to take the complete loss on it, so they want to try to apply pressure and get their money, and then if they do something to him, they do it. Mission number one is to secure the bag. Once you get the money, then it's open seas and do what you want to them, but they got to get the money first. My celly actually went by face. I said, face, look, y'all need to leave me out this, man. If he already hollered at your big homie and he's hollering at his other dudes, why you keep bringing me into this, man? It's like you trying to drag me into something that ain't got nothing to do with me. He said, look, we're cellmates, man. We talk about everything. We in this bitch together, so I'm just telling you what's going on. Like, more or less letting me know without telling me. This ain't somebody you want to be seen walking with again, Jay. Because if you're with him, when stuff pops off, it is what it is. I said, face, look, y'all holler at the man. I'm not doing the, he said, he said, he said, he said, playing middleman no more. Cause every time I pass a message, it keeps me wrapped up in this. I ain't got nothing to do with this. And I'm gonna tell you, like I've been telling you since day one, that's not my homeboy. You seen me talk to him. That was the one time I talked to him. Or oh, for one time talking to him, all oh, this has came up. I'm not no messenger, man. I'm not going and telling him this. I'm not going and telling him that. Like. It's already been said, whatever y'all got to do, do it. But just leave me out of it. They holler at him. He proclaimed, my tell the big homie, whatever. That I swear to God, my girl sent it. Y'all trying to play games now. Now we some we going to have to fight. Somebody got to fight. I told y'all, Red ain't no small dude. Got a big ass mouth to hear him. When you would see him base up, you would just know like, yo, if this dude snaps, he can hurt a couple different people. He tells my cellular artist what he's going to do and... 
da 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 going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Face tells him, look, man, I'm going to tell you now, you can pipe down with all that. Go holler at the big homie, man. I don't re relay the message to you. Clearly, you're not getting it through your head. I don't know who you're getting hype with, but they can't touch him without being told to go. We go out to wreck that day. He takes that opportunity. They open the back gate. When they open the back gate, they let upstairs out and downstairs out to go to wreck. When that gate's open, the officer opens the top and it goes downstairs over the bottom. So if you live in 300, it gives you a chance to slide around into the other pod and go over and talk to somebody. Oh. Going out the back door, the officer is, you know, standing there watching us go out. And all of a sudden, he slams the door. Maybe 30, 40 of us going out the door. He slams the door closed. Officer does, locks it, and takes off. Don't let nobody else out the door. That's an indicator something just jumped off. A few minutes later, he comes back, opens the back door. Y'all come in and lock down. Hey, what's going on, man? We just got outside. Come in and lock down. We go in and lock down. My Sully's in the shower. He gets out. What's, what's going on? I don't know, man. We went out the back door, and they told us to lock down. A couple days goes by. They come and get my cellmate out. He is a gang member. He's a documented gang member. Everybody knows. It's on record. He comes back to the cell. I say, Yo, what's going on? Bro, this shit crazy. Well, what's, what's going on? Dude Red got his teeth knocked out right in front of the police, right in front of the control booth. I said, yeah? He slid around the door. Went over there hard. His big homie, big homie's in the microwave. Starts getting loud with him over this money situation. Big homie folded his teeth back in his mouth. Knock, knock his teeth out. Now they said they folded the man. The investigator said he hit him and folded his teeth up inside of there. I said, man, I hope I don't get, I hope I don't get questioned, pulled out of here, questioned about all this, because y'all keep keeping me in the middle of all this. I don't know, man, but they talking about pressing charges on dude for messing dude's teeth up. You know, the prison ain't trying to pay the bill. Somebody got to pay the bill, and if they press charges on him, then he's got to pay the bill. And there's still more to go. We stay on lock for a better part of that week. Whenever you go on lock like that, they use that as an opportunity to come in and shake down. They love to shake down, stir things, look for things, get to touching on things, and digging through your stuff. We go through the whole shakedown process, them strips, stripping cells, stripping us, looking in nooks and crannies for contraband, knives, even though this wasn't a knife situation, us being on lock gives them an opportunity to shake down because we're all locked in the cells. After maybe a week or so, we all come back out, regular movement, back on the yard. I have nothing to do with this, there's no repercussions. I'm cool with the majority of everybody in there. I've had my squabbles in the past, but you get it on and get it out the way. Maybe, I don't know, better part of a month now has passed after all this. We're gonna come off lock, everything's going back to normal. Other situations have popped off. The red situation is, is history. Red's in the hole being shipped. Their big homies being shipped for attacking red. I don't know if red pressed charges. I don't know what happened. I just know they questioned everybody about it, right? We're outside and there's the handball court. It's right there in the corner where the gang members violate each other. It's also where if we needed to fight, we would go because it's a blind spot. It's like the L at the back door where you come out for wreck. That's where we would catch our wreck. Wreck is also a term used for fighting. That's where we go knock up. I see him take the little blood dude over in the corner. This is a dude that I had always seen with these blood dudes, always making a bunch of noise, but I didn't really know the dude like that. They take him in the corner, and this ain't no just regular violation where it's like three dudes on one. It's a whole bunch of bloods beating the hell out of this dude, stomping this dude like completely annihilating, smashing this man, doing him real dirty. I'm talking about when you've got somebody down and they can't fight no more, and dudes are still kicking them and punching them. I know this ain't no regular violation they're giving this dude. Whatever he did is serious. They're beating this man like he is not one of theirs, like he is an enemy. That is your gang. The same people, gang gang, I'll tell y'all about gang banging. The same dudes he was cool with, kicking it with, walking with, ate with, fought with. The dudes that he had already fought once to become a part of, got him in the corner and they're just completely crushing this dude. Like many men before him, they left him laying in the dirt. Halfway through our wreck period, we have an officer that comes out and unlocks that back door. When he opens that back door, he sees this dude laying on the ground. Locked down, we go back on lock. My celly was, we all go in and we lock down, right? Me and him get to talk and I'm like, yo, we just, it seems like every other week we're going on lockdown behind something y'all got going on. What's up now? He's like, you're not even going to believe this. Well, tell me, because we're going to find out anyway. Everybody's on lock. What's going on? 
the dude that just got violated. Okay, what about him? That was the dude that, you know, Red was supposed to send that dude girl's money. Okay, so what about it? You said that Red's girl never met up with the girl, blah, blah, blah. This girl did meet up with the girl. The girl did get the money. Old boy told the girl not to say nothing about the money and just send it to his books. What? Old girl said the homeboy told her not to say anything about the money and just send it to his books. Something to happen where they had fallen now. She's got a homegirl that also messes with a dude up there. Her homegirl relays the message that dude lied about the money and that they really did get the money. So Red got his teeth folded back in his mouth for nothing. But in reality, even if he was telling the truth, which comes to show that he was telling the truth, he got his teeth folded back in his mouth for running his mouth. Now he's got to walk throughout life with everybody seeing that. Oh, you like to run your mouth. Guarantee that's what happened to you. Guarantee that's where your teeth went. You was running your mouth to the wrong one. And they dug up in it. That is what happens when you bark all day and don't bite. Several times Red had got loud. Red kept getting hype. And they let it slide. Because they wanted the money. Usually that wouldn't slide. It would be on site. They would mess him up. But they let it slide because they wanted the money. I thought at first they would let it slide because... Dude got a little size on him, but I had seen them beat up much bigger dude, especially, and I hate to say this, a white dude. Nah, if you're gonna do something, do it. If you wanna get all big and buck on people, do it. Right then, right there. Don't keep running your mouth because they'll let you get away with it, but for so long, and then the right one's gonna eventually dig all up in your mouth. Left that man with his teeth. Can you imagine having your teeth? How do you fold teeth? In order for his teeth to be folded, that means they were there. You know how long a damn root is on a tooth? That means they would have had to bust the gums and the teeth would have to come forward and then fold back or maybe broke them and laid them back. I don't know, but the moral of today's story is do not run your mouth. And even more than that, do not go to prison. That is a world you know nothing about. That is a world you want to know nothing about. Do a lot about that money, man. It caused that big homie to get shipped up off of there, possibly catch charges. It's lucky he ain't kill him out there. You know what else I was thinking about when I was doing this video? Why do so many guys have nicknames after colors? I know a bunch of reds. I know a whole bunch of blacks. I know a bunch of blues. It's a common name. But anyways, with today's story, man, I hope you learned something. A, number one, don't do drugs. Especially in a place like prison, where if there's a miscommunication or you see an opportunity to do something slick and think you're going to get away with it and still have time ahead of you, being involved in stuff like that will follow you. Getting drugs and not paying for them will follow you. You may not pay that day, but you will pay one day. You'll eventually pay down the line. Number two, leave the gangs alone. Don't go getting stuff from the gangs ever because you're going to pay it back in blood. And number three, don't run your mouth if you feel the need to do something if you're really built like that act on it don't stand there running your mouth as you're talking the next man is deciding right then and there what he's going to do to you if you're busy running your mouth you're not fighting instead of saying anything when red knew that it had come to a point where there was going to be pressure he should have just took off on whoever he could take off got his point across and just started fighting but instead they let him slide a couple times. He thought he was all good. Thought that his size was going to get him through the gate and he going to be able to just continue to run his mouth. Not knowing the dude he just pushed up on is the only reason he still had his teeth to begin with. Not knowing when he went over there thinking he was going to holler at this dude that this dude wasn't the one to holler at. This dude just folded his teeth in the mouth. You need to understand this. Stay out of that world. This right here is a beautiful world. That is terrible. The whole act of seeing somebody get attacked is something you'll carry the rest of your life. You will carry PTSD. When you hear a skirt skirt or a noise around you for the rest of your life, you will look because in that world, you're used to seeing that turn into violence. That is related to violence. I hate everything about incarceration, everything about prison, everything about my past. Sometimes telling these story, they just leave me sick to my stomach when I'm done. I look at my life now 
and I look at my life then and I hate everything about what my life once was. I can't believe that all for nothing I gave this up. There is somebody right now watching this video that will give up this beautiful life you have for nothing. You will go in there and come out trying to glorify this or making it seem like it was, you know what I mean, you was this and you was that, when in reality, you were lonely, broken hearted, depressed, and away from the ones you love the most. Now, I keep telling y'all, and I will continue y'all to tell y'all, it always ends bad. Whenever you're doing something you shouldn't be doing, it is gonna end bad. It might not end that way today, but it will eventually. But anyways, these jails, detention centers, these prisons, these facilities, they're all just crazier worlds inside of an already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. Just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. And to all my real ones and the awesome real ones watching, because y'all still watching me. Y'all know how we do. Salute. Hell, you fold a man's teeth in his mouth. Just fold? Like, 